Welcome back to Advent of Code 2023, day seven. So yesterday was a very easy problem. So if we've learned anything from this year, it's that the uh, the difficulty kind of goes follows some sort of zigzag pattern. So today should be the hard one. Yesterday's was the easiest, I would say, Advent of Code has ever had, to be honest. So tomorrow, today, today could be the hardest we've ever had. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see then. Seven. Camel cards. Oh yeah, because we were headed to the desert, weren't we? So... Your all expenses... Oops, sorry. Your all expenses paid trip turns out to be a one-way, five-minute ride in an airship. I've seen people checking the uh, the Google Trends or the, the the page views for these Wikipedia's uh, Wikipedia articles. No, just like it's really funny because that there, there's like articles for like Almanac or um, stuff like that, and it's just over the years, and suddenly, phew, advent of code sends tens of thousands of people to view the <laughs> the Wikipedia. At least it's a cool airship. It drops you off at the edge of a vast desert and descends back to Island Island. Did you bring the parts? You turn around to see an elf completely covered in white clothing, wearing goggles and riding a large camel. Wikipedia for camel. Specifically a dromedary. Because there's also the, uh, uh, what's it called? The Bactrian? But the dromedary is what you find in the Arab um, Arabic, uh, uh, Middle Eastern areas, and the Bactrian is the, um, why is there no Wikipedia article for Bactrian camel? It's weird. There, there is. So why is that not hyperlinked? This, this uh, article needs. Where is it? I should. Uh, I should edit that. But I'm, I'm in the middle of something. All right. You're here to figure out why the sand stopped. Parts for the sand. Yes. Come with me. I will show you. He beckons you onto the camel. After riding a bit across the sands of Desert Island. You can see what look like very large rocks covering half of the horizon. The elf explains that the rocks are all along the path of Desert Island that is directly above Island Island, making it hard to even get there. Normally they use big machines to move rocks and filter the sand, but the machines are broken down because Desert Island recently stopped receiving the parts they need to fix the machines. You've already assumed it'll be your job to figure out why the parts stopped when she asks if you can help. You agree automatically. Because the journey will take a few days, <laughs> she offers you to teach you the game of camel cards. Oh, so it's not going to be to do with machinery or rocks or stuff. It's, it's just we're playing poker now. Wonderful. Except it's designed to be easier to play while riding a camel. In camel cards, you get a list of hands. And your goal is to order them based on the strength of each hand. The hand consists of five cards, labelled one of um, ace down to two. The relative strength of each card follows this order. Hello, Amaro. Where A is the highest and two is the lowest. All right. Every hand is exactly one type. From strongest to weakest, they are five of a kind, four of a kind, full house, three of a kind, two pair, one pair, high card. So pretty standard poker ordering there. No straight flush. Oh no, no. No straights or flushes of any kind. That makes it easier, I guess. <laughs> 
so okay if two hands have the same type a second ordering rule takes effect start by com comparing the first card in each hand Oh, okay. So we're not allowed to shift the cards around. The first card is a designated card. Okay. If these cards are different, the hand with the stronger first card is considered stronger. Alright. So first you order by the poker. Want to know the first approach that came to mind when I read it? Uh, let me guess. Something... Using a poker calculator or something. Because <laughs> you get poker calculators for plugging in hands. Uh, I don't know then. So the first... He included a T card to prevent those. What? Well, that can just be replaced with 10, can't it? Um, all right, so first we order by hand strength based on poker rules. Okay, then second ordering is, is just lexicogra lexicographical ordering, isn't it? No, well, reverse lexicographical ordering. I suppose if we change all these to be numbers, they'll be easier. So 2 up to 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. <clears throat> My first thought was to turn each letter into its hex number. Uh, okay. I, that wouldn't help, though, would it? Because they'd just be in some weird order. Well, it wouldn't really have any correspondence to the actual ordering, would it? Or well, ace. Yeah. So you can sort them then. Well, for the f first ordering, for the second ordering, uh, you do... care about the for the second ordering you do care about this ordering don't you for the tie breaking it's based on what's the stronger hand so wait so Yeah, but you do care about the, whether the first card is is stronger, so I I don't understand why the hex what the what the hex is doing for you. What? Because you need this order to be retained, because that ordering is used to determine which card is stronger, right? Oh, that's what you mean. Fine. 
but then a k q but then j is out of place so you'd need to change j to something when you all right but yeah you could do something like that i think i'll just i'll just switch them to i'll just change the letters to be uh integers up to 14. all right so so then second ordering it's just lexicographical that's easy enough Isn't J11? J is 11 in terms of poker, yeah. But with your hex number, what's isn't. What is your hex number for that? Yeah, that's what I'm planning to do. But I, I didn't quite understand what. You mean by turn each letter into its hex number? Okay, maybe I was thrown off by what you said to do with hexes. <laughs> That's that is what I was gonna do, yeah. Yeah. Just replace A with fourteen, K with thirteen, so on. Alright. So, okay, so that's the second ordering. Okay. Okay, so first we describe the, the trick and see where it falls on this trick list. Otherwise, we just switch to comparing like the, the first card, second card, so on. All right, got it. So we're not actually doing in real poker. You would you would take the trick and then order the strongest. Uh, it's hard to describe in words, but you would order lexicographically, but prioritize the strongest trick. So the the full house you would order by the three tuple and then break ties on the two tuple and then like if you're comparing one pair then you would you would um the three remaining cards would also be ordered le lexicographically so you always take the next next best trick from the leftover cards sort of i don't know anyway <sighs> all right i understand how to order Tricks. To play camel cards, you are given a list of hands and their corresponding bid. Ooh, okay. Five cards. Each hand is followed by its bid amount. Each hand wins an amount equal to its bid, multiplied by its rank. Where the weakest hand gets rank 1, the second weakest hand gets rank 2 and so on up to the strongest hand.
All right, so if I just make a method to take a um, hand and evaluate a tuple, which describes its um, fully describes its trick value. So it, the first value in this tuple will be just, I don't know, the trick number from one, two, two, three, four, five, six, or whatever. And then the next value will be the lexicographical whatever. Then, um, yeah, then we can order these pretty easily. Okay, so... First, you put them in order of strength. Rank one, blah, blah, blah. Okay, okay, I get it. And that's the input, not too bad. As long as our method works, as long as our calculation works. Then I don't see any algorithmic difficulty here. It's just a case of programming it correctly. Which is always the case, but there's no algorithmic challenge, I think, in terms of runtime. I'm... I'm curious about part two. I thought he could come up with some creative part twos here. Making it into a, like some sort of two player zero sum game or something. Stop watching now. All right. Good luck yourself. Okay, opening the IDE has sent my computer fan racing. I'm going to have to find out if there's a way to limit that because it's probably interfering with my mic. Okay, so... First, we want to... just pull out these... Um, Hands, so we've got okay, fine. So uh, yeah, I'll just call it hands. Um, and we'll put just. Pop them in, pause the right hand side to an int. So we got Take this. Uh, so we want hand bid equals line dot split. Just strip it just in case, but it's not needed. Um, bid, pass that to an int. Just put both of them. in there I think I think uh, at this point I'll convert the hand to a tuple and change all the letters to numbers so that we we're working with the uh The numerical representation so let's take so uh let's just uh that, that let's just uh Let's 
do that. So if it's if card dot is digit. So if it's already a number, just return int card. Um, And then instead of doing, okay, let's, let's just say, uh, so we'll just make a quick thing here. So it's going to be 10, perhaps to 10, check, perhaps to 11. Is this, is it case sensitive? Okay. Mean, maps to 12. King maps to thirteen base maps to fourteen. Okay, we'll just do that. Bit of a hack. Doesn't like okay, we'll leave a space. There we go. Alright, so hand equals tuple of get numerical card for card in hand. So but we retain the all order. There we go. So that's that's got all the information we need now. And we're keeping everything we need in case of part two. But we don't need to remember A and K and Q. We can convert those to numbers. All right. So the next step. We need to com to com to um We need to get trick value basically get strength we get strength and it's going to return a tuple to describe the strength and that will be orderable all right so this will return so we need to first get the trick value and then we'll just return I don't know, the hand itself as a parameter for the tuple. So I'm going to have to take a couple of minutes break. All right, I'll be back in two minutes. So now I'll think about this. It doesn't seem hard. Let's put it in a working state before I leave it. Luvia Daguar, welcome in. Have you been doing Advent of Code? Alright. In fact, I'll get some more coffee while I'm at it. Are you doing Python as well? Alright then. See you in a couple of minutes. <clears throat>
Okay. So. Uh, get strength. So we want... First we want to find the trick. Alright, so... How... Okay, here's an idea. Let's use counter. Python has a nice thing in collections called... From... Oh my... What was that? From collections import counter. So, if I just do c equals counter hand, all right, just print what, oh, yeah, just, let's just print what that looks like. So it should map each card to the number of times it appears in the hand, all right, so... So, get strength of and zero, zero. So, seven appears twice, eight appears once, 14 appears once, 11 appears once. Okay. Now, if we take the values, C dot values like that, then it will just give us the counts. One, one, two, one. All right. I'm getting somewhere. And now we order so we want list of C dot values um let's say sorted but reversed. It will always put the, the largest groups at the start. All right. So now, I uh, can do that. Get make a tuple. So now, this tuple that describes the structure starting with the biggest group four three two um we can now compare that tuple with the all right let me just skip my coffee now I mean, this this tuple here is everything we need, right? It's already it already obeys the the trick um, the trick properties. Four, if if I if I check if this tuple is bigger than another tuple, four will win. Five will win, then four, then then three two. Because uh, in the case of three of a kind, it's actually gonna check the second parameter. So full house. Oh. Yeah, so full house will come next, then three of a kind, because that'll be three, one, 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 one. Then, yeah, so it'll be five, four, three, three, then two pair, because it'll be two, two, one. Then two, and then one, 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 one. So we've got the... So... That is just trick strength. Bit of a mouthful, uh, but I kind of described it as I built it. 
Alright, so that's trick strength. The bigger is the better. And the second parameter we want is It's just the hand itself because the hand itself already describes the lexicographical ordering so so actually we want to return this tuple prioritize the trick strength and then the second is just really just the cell okay like that So let's try printing one of these. So, okay, this is the um, strength in terms of tuple. You could make it into an integer or something, you like add some powers of two together, but whatever. Python's good for comparing it to tuples. Um, so, Stick with this. So we've got the strength, 2111. So that's one pair. And then the second parameter is just the trick itself. So if I've done this correctly, I should be able to order hands by this now. So hands.sort key equals get strength. Reverse equals true. So it should just, oh, key, no, 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 we want key equals, okay, so just say lambda, because it's going to, there's a pair of things there, so we want get strength of P, just the first one. Reverse equals true. All right, let's see if this looks about right. Uh, just remove some of this stuff. Okay, so it's, it's sorted them. So we've got 11, 11, 11, 11. So that's five of a kind. Then we've got four of a kind. And then we've got four of a kind again, but oh, but um, it's odd. Okay, so let's let's have a look at these first few. Five of five of a kind wins. Then we've got two four of a kinds. Actually, how many four of a kinds? We've got three, maybe more. But if you, but it, we prioritize the one which had the the fourteens at the front, then. Um, can't, there's no arrows to move this gradually, so if I move it like this, see it goes too fast, whatever, it does look like it's doing it correctly, yeah, and then the, and then the second card is compared, and then we've got, and then we've got four of a kind with nines, Sixes, yeah, okay. All right, all right. Uh, looks looks about right. Now we want to. The next thing we need to do is get the rank. So the 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 total winnings. Total winnings is the bid multiplied by the rank. So the rank of the. Best trick is one. So you get more winnings for the lower ranked things. Okay. Okay, so we want to... Print... 
So it's going to be bid times I plus one or I or just say I pair pair so I pair in enumerate and so I pair will pick out the will, will be the index in other words the rank but off by one and the pair And in that pair, the second parameter is the bid. So it would be the bid times the rank. Okay. Uh, but it's going to be the sum of um, that. Just sum them up. Let's have a look at that. Winnings is that. Nope, it's too low. <laughs> okay. Let's try the example then. Six six four zero. Oh. Six four. 6440 it's supposed to be. Alright, what have we got wrong? Oh no, rank is reversed rank. Whoops, okay, okay, okay. So we need to reverse the rank, so it should be... Just take out reverse equals true. Rank one means it's bad. That kind of makes more sense. You get more winnings. All right, six four four zero, oh. six four four zero. Oh. Okay, got it. So it should be that. Correct. <clears throat> to make things a little more interesting, the elf introduces one additional rule. Now J cards are jokers. Oh no. Wild cards that can act like whatever card will make the hand the strongest type possible. Alright, so I guess you probably want to make it always an ace and no not an ace you want to make it whatever matches the largest available trick and if if there isn't one then just make it an ace so j cards are now the weakest individual cards weaker even than two But J cards can pretend to be whatever card is best for the purpose of determining, determining hand type. Ah, so for the inter, for the second ordering, they just they just oh man, okay, fine. Basically, we'll let J's match whatever is the highest group already on the board. Uh, 
um, we'll give it a numerical value of one. Okay, so we need basically make a new, a new ordering here. Okay, um, we can keep this as is. That's fine. Okay, get strength, let's call it get strength two. All right, so the first thing we need to do, trick strength. Okay, so. The, the better way to do this is first take out all the jokers. So let's say num jokers equals and dot count. So it was 11 basically. No, no, and, and that's not a method, is it? Uh, is it? Hand is a string. No, no, it's a tuple. Oh, it is. Okay. So count how many jo jokers there are. And now I'll just delete all the jokers. So. Uh, and without jokers equals tuple card for card in and if card is not 11 all right trick strength is gonna be It's gonna be that. Let's make it a list instead of um, a tuple, so we can modify. So we're gonna use hand without jokers. Dot values, blah blah blah. So it's basically our hand. If we basically discarded the jokers, so this so this will now find our trick strength without the jokers, and then we can just add num jokers to the first trip, the, the main, the, the the leading trick, right? So this will be much harder if you're accounting for flushes and straights and stuff, because you've got to check for all possibilities, but this is easier. Okay, so I would say now trick strength zero plus equal num jokers. And then just cast this to tuple. All right, so that handles the Joker's side of things, I think. After that, it's just as before. All right, so when it comes to hand, oh, we need to replace Place all the elevens with ones basically. So equals two ball card. So it's gonna be one or card in and if card is eleven, 
else just the cards. So it's replacing all the 11s with 1s. And just use this new hand as the uh, comparer. Oh, no, sorry, that's not how you do this. One if card equals 11, else card. The card in hand. It's basically a... a what's the term? A, a something operator. Uh, often referred to in C++. Conditional? No, it's... I can't, I can't remember. Ternary? No. Anyway, um, so now I think we just do this with get strength two. And then you just print the winnings as usual. Now that's sorted according to strength two. Oh, if it's all jokers. jokers this trips up um so without jokers it's gonna be an empty tuple bit doesn't it like it doesn't like this one because that will be an empty list so just say if not trick strength so if trick strength is an empty list say trick strength equals five just just five that that's five of a kind all right so it says all right let's have a quick look at the hands so now it's saying the weakest is this one because the previous one had a joker in it But apart from that, so 259710 is now the weakest one. The one with the joker in has now been pushed up to be a pair. Looks about right. Uh, little bit hacky. Correct. But it's correct. We don't care about hackiness. We're not producing software here, we're just trying to get answers. That was nice. It's really testing, you know, whether you can do one of the most important things in programming. Sorting. And it's not even, it's not, it's not, you know, sorting algorithms. It's not like breadth, it's not like merge, sort, quick sort, whatever. It's just testing whether you can write a comparator. If you can write a comparator, then you defer to the engines, uh, the, the programming engines built in sorting. 
um, for comparison-based sorting, which in Python is Tim sort or something like that, uh, which is a pretty effective. Is it Tim sort? Yeah. hybrid stable sorting algorithm derived from merge sort and insertion sort but that's all behind the scenes it doesn't matter as long as you've got a comparator you just you then just uh, defer to python's built-in sort method so yeah i would say <clears throat> i i have taught or been a teaching assistant for for like um algorithm 101 courses and the very first thing you always learn really is to sort because once you can do that <laughs> you can do anything no you know there's much more to learn but sorting is at the forefront of things so i think it's good to always test that people not only can sort but can um sort with a twist because that actually does come up in software engineering Especially in data, data, data analysis. Data analysis is all about sorting. So here you just have to sort according to a custom ordering. And and I mean, if you if, if you if you're playing poker, that's this is this is actually what you would do. Except it's actually slightly more complicated because you got you got to check the flushes, straights. So. Um, straight flush so I mean in poker you would actually have to write a more complex comparator you'd have to check the straight flush then um, straight flush beats five of a kind then four of a kind so uh, what is the ordering it's straight flush five of a kind four of a kind Full house, flush, straight, three of a kind, two pair, one pair, pair card, basically. And you don't do this second ordering thing. You just, you just. Um, it's actually harder. It's actually more complex. You have to. Um, sort according to the value of your highest trick so this is a lot easier than poker <laughs> but i mean if if they were doing real poker then you could just plug this into a poker engine uh, you could just you can use poker calculators which sort there's already libraries for that, so this custom thing avoids people using that. Not, it's not against the rules to use those. Um, as long as you're not using AI to solve your problem, it's just uh, still finishing the hand evaluation. Yeah, Python, Python, Python's pretty strong for this. Because it just it just deferring to the default ordering of tuples is a is a pretty useful thing. I mean, some of the other languages probably have that as well, but Python doesn't complain about lack of comparator when you just plug things into a tuple. It, it or everything defaults to some sort of ordering unless you're trying to order lists or something. So yeah, it's pretty good. In the end, I'm turning every hand into an array of cards using a race sort. I'm just comparing card one and five, five of a kind, four of a kind. Yeah, you can do that. Then using the original order for tiebreakers. That's yeah, using the original order for tiebreakers is is correct. Yeah. Yeah, if you pick out the trick with with if conditions, that also is. Is fine, and I mean that method would actually be better if we were doing real poker because the straight and the flush get mixed in there, and so you need to you can't rely on what I've done, which is just order by the topological kind of structure of it. You need to throw in the straight and the flush.
And the Joker rule isn't as com complex as I thought it would be. It could, I mean, if you had straights and flushes there, then it would be much more complicated because you have to check if your Joker can be used to make straights and flushes. If you've got multiple Jokers, then it gets really complicated to use because two Jokers, there's many different combinations they could be. You got to check check whether you can make a straight with a which has a gap. Um, Yeah, poker with jokers. <laughs> there's an old, there's a board game called Camel Up. I don't know, this just made me think of that, Camel Up. Pretty good game. And in that you do actually bet. You gamble. You, you place bets on which um, camel's going to come first out of... Oh, this is different. No, no, yeah, this is camel. Playing something today. So the new Wheel of Struggle has been announced. Can you guess what it is? It's um I think I'm I don't know if I'll be good at this one because there are I think some wheelers who have played this a lot more than me, but at the same time it is a genre I'm I, I'm kind of good at, but then it's retro. Uh not Tomb Raider, no. Uh, actually, so the wheel uh, spun Return of a Legend, which means um, uh, a winner of a, uh, an old wheel is brought back. So we're actually going to play uh, a, a game which was previously on the wheel. And the wheel of Return of a Legend is much bigger. It encompasses all the, all the past games on the wheel. I think once a game comes back for Return of a Legends, it then gets removed. <laughs> so it won't come up again. But Return of a Legends, we've had like Halo 3. So that's off the Wheel of Legends. Impossible to guess then. Yeah, so it's Doom. Doom 1. Um, let me have a look at the stats here. So yeah, Doom 1 with... But we're going to play with let's have a look at what they said i think they've decided it's going to be with oh wow this is quite a set of rules here okay so it's going to be played using gz doom uh, i have doom 1 because i've got doom 3 i own doom 3 on steam and doom 1 and doom 2 the what files are actually buried in there so um, you uh, you can use Doom. You could legally own Doom One and Two if you have Doom Three, basically. Doom Three D. Um, it's based on levels beaten and then tiebreakers of time. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Difficulty ultra violence. No jumping or crouching, which was added by GZ Doom. Oh, I like jumping and crouching. Haven't of coat timed out. Um, auto running allowed. Crosshairs allowed. No cheats, of course. No IDDQD using. Saving only at the beginning of a level. We don't need to count deaths. Okay, actually, it's pretty. Pretty somewhat vanilla rule set, just beat the game as fast as possible. But you gotta disable jumps and crouches. Ugh, playing with vertical auto aim. Gross. Gross. I hate auto aim. 
auto aim for the noobs. All right, fine, whatever. I don't think anyone really likes auto aim, but they're doing it because it's it was they they want it to be how the game originally shipped, except for a bit upgraded. So okay, I guess I can I can accept that. Can we still move the mouse up and down though? Yeah, probably we're allowed to do that. It's just it will auto aim vertically because I would hate not being able to move the mouse. That would. That would practically make me uh, motion sick, I imagine, if I couldn't move the mouse up and down. Alright, so, um... Alright, anyway, that's a whole different thing. Let's let's focus on the programming here. So, quite a... S it's hard to tell whether this is... Um, a high success rate, because naturally they're not going to be many people completing it. I think that's quite low uh, compared to yesterday. So I think a lot of people are... Well, yesterday was was massively easy, so it's, it's hard to judge from this. It does look quite low, so I think a lot of people are just struggling to write custom comparators, but I mean, aside from that, I don't think it's a particularly hard problem, but I... This is an important thing that you need to know for programming, so... So, um... Let's have a look at the, the old leaderboards. Yeah. Okay. And... Um... What else did I want to check? Day seven. Eight minutes forty-five. That's quite a long time, I guess. It's not easy to quickly put together this uh, ordering. Although for part one, I expect it to be very quick. Let's have a look. Four fifty-two. That's not that quick, to be honest. So yeah. Um, interesting. I think. Now that I really know what it all is, I could have done it faster than five minutes, but um, but yeah, it's a cup. A few minutes was spent read reading comprehension, so yeah. Oh, 16 minutes. If I wasn't streaming this, I think I could have got top 100 or part one. Oh no, no, that's no part one is 10 minutes. Yeah. I might have gotten just in there, but I don't want to rush things for the stream. So, um, throwing in the jokers there, I don't know if I could have, but yeah, you know, maybe. Okay, then. So, yeah, but I don't think I'll play Doom today, I think. I'll um, maybe go back to one of those games that I've left hanging for ages, like uh, Fire Emblem, maybe. Alright, anyway, i got to get the video sorted out, upload that to YouTube. I think I have a few people who are actually following my series, so they're probably waiting for the next video. I'm getting later and later <laughs> each day. So... Thanks for watching, and um, good luck yourself, Amara, if you're still working on this, which I guess you are. Um, I don't know how hard this will be in your chosen using Game Maker. Um, might be kind of tricky because this is more of a data processing kind of thing, but uh, yep, yeah, good luck with that. And see you tomorrow.